The next thing we'd like to review on MRI scans is the posterior lateral corner injury. So the posterior lateral corner of the knee is mainly comprised of three static stabilizers, the fibrocollateral ligament, the popliteus tendon, and the popliteal fibrillar ligament. There's a lot of other small ligaments that are also involved with the tears, but the main structures that hold the knee together are those three. So what I'll try to do is go through the different MRI sequences we look for for these injury patterns, and also some of the secondary signs that we see with a posterior lateral corner injury. So the first thing that I'll review for this posterior lateral corner injury is to review the fat saturation images. And we'll start off with a coronal view of a right knee. So as we start to course down, one of the first things we'll see is some edema in the bone on both the anterior aspect of the medial femoral condyle and the anterior aspect of the medial tibial plateau. And this is a common secondary sign of a posterior lateral corner injury. So when these structures are injured on the outside of the knee, they'll gap open and they'll pinch down on the medial side of the knee. So we'll commonly see this bone bruise pattern here in the femur and the tibia when there's a posterior lateral corner injury present. We can start to see some of the soft tissue swelling on the lateral aspect of the knee here. And this is the iliotibial band where it comes down and attaches to Gertie's tubercle. So here's the lateral meniscus. We can see that there's been a disruption here of the meniscal tibial portion of the lateral capsule that's been commonly called the mid-third lateral capsule ligament or the anterolateral attachment site of the anterolateral ligament. So we can see that at this location. And then this is the fibular head. And we'll start to see that there's some intersubstance changes within the biceps femoris along here. We can see the biceps femoris has been peeled off the fibular head. So here's the top of the styloid. And you can see that there's some signal between the biceps femoris muscle here and the tendon and where it attaches to the fibular head. Concurrent with this, we can see some signal change and some disruption here of the popliteal fibril ligament. So the popliteal fibril ligament once again courses from this posterior medial aspect of the fibular styloid up to the muscular tendinous junction of the popliteus here. And as we follow that back out anteriorly once again, we can start to see that there's been a disruption of the popliteus tendon at its attachment site on the femur. We can see the signal that's between it, so it tells us that it's been disrupted and evulsed off there. And here's the fibular collateral ligament, which shows a very wavy appearance here, consistent with a complete tear. So the fibular collateral ligament has been torn off the fibula, as we can see here, as well as the biceps femoris being torn off the popliteal fibril ligament having the tear, and also some tearing within the popliteus musculature. Other things that we can see in this MRI scan that we don't want to miss are some injury to the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and we can also see that there's some evidence of increased signal change within the intercondylar notch. But the main things to focus on for the posterior lateral corner injury are to look at the popliteal fibril ligament and the fibular collateral ligament disruption and the disruption of the femoral attachment site of the popliteus tendon on the femur. The next image series that we'll go through is the sagittal images. And we'll start off on the medial side of the knee, so we'll course over. We can start to see the bone bruise pattern on the anterior aspect of the medial femoral condyle and the anterior aspect of the medial, medial tibial plateau, which is a common secondary sign of a posterior lateral corner injury. Here is the direct arm of the semimembranosus on the medial side and then the medial meniscus itself. As we get more towards the midline, we'll start to see the evidence of the bone bruises dissipating and we'll look for evidence of cruciate ligament injury, which we can see here. This is a complete disruption of the ACL and also there's basically hardly any structure left of the PCL. So we can see the femoral attachment site with some increased signal intensity here, but the PCL has been completely disrupted off its femoral attachment site. As we start to course more laterally, we'll look at the lateral meniscus. And you can see some of the posterior capsule injured here. And another thing that we can recognize is the increased signal intensity that will occur in the popliteus muscle when there's an injury, as well as the anterior subluxation of the tibia here compared to the femur. And here's the fabella up here. So the posterior capsule looks disrupted. We can see that there's some increased signal intensity 
indicating an injury to the popliteus muscle. And as we course over further, we just don't see the normal attachment of the biceps on the fibular head. So you can see that there's some signal in here where it's been disrupted off and the fibular collateral ligament also has been pulled off and is sitting in a more wavy pattern rather than its direct attachment site to the lateral aspect of the fibular head. And here we can see the axial cuts where there's a lot of edema. And in these circumstances, we can look more at generalized structures rather than looking at specific structures because we've seen most of the things we need to see on the coronal and sagittal views. But it, it'll help us to look for the bone bruise patterns and also the rather wide disruption of both the popliteus off the femur over here as well as the fibular collateral ligament where we can see them injured over there. Thank you.